thank you so much to be here. And most importantly, I'd like to welcome you all to my district. Thank you uh, for coming here tonight. I'm so proud to represent the Upper West Side and very importantly, this church, which does so many amazing things. Um, so, and I really want to thank the other presenters. I'm really looking forward to hearing all of your speeches and learning from you tonight. Um, you know, the science just eludes me. No matter how, I, my, my brain just can't understand it. So I'm gonna try again tonight to understand what it is that you guys do, it's so important. But I do understand budgets and numbers. And in terms of what the city is, what our city, New York City is doing, it's sort of, uh, it, it comes quite clearly to me that we have a responsibility to understand simply what we're investing our money in and why, right? So I don't have to let you know, but there is a growing body of evidence that energy consumption might best be filled by renewable sources, such as solar, wind, and geothermal. And there are a host of reasons why that's probably the case, and we're gonna hear from the experts about climate change details, and I'm really looking forward to that. I should also do a tiny disclaimer that my oldest daughter, I do have a bias, my oldest daughter uh, for her first job out of college is selling solar panels door to door. Um, <laughs> outside of Boston, home by home. She's doing very well, so. Um, but, but she's, you know, she's my go-to source. Um, you know, the notion of divestment is also weighted, and probably appropriately so, by social activism. So while others here are going to address the activism, my focus is going to be on the city's pension funds and our fiduciary responsibility to our pensioners, a group that I one day hope to join, um, and taxpayers. Taxpayers who would ultimately have to make up the difference of what is owed to our pensioners should the pension funds not perform adequately. So the question I'd like to address is, given that the sources of energy are changing in a noteworthy way, what is the city's response to ensure that our pension funds are sound? What is the responsibility of government officials at a local level here in New York City to ensure that we are being financially responsible to our pensioners and ultimately the taxpayers? What we need is a roadmap. We need a roadmap that measures our risk, our exposure, that assesses that risk given externalities like regulation, that evaluates the risk within various time frames, the near future, the distant future that identifies alternatives for our pension funds to invest in, that looks at what other government pension funds are doing, and develops a plan of action. And that's really what I want to talk about today, is that roadmap. So if we're going to have a roadmap that allows us to meet our fiduciary responsibility regarding energy investments, what has to happen? What questions would this study answer? What are the parameters of the study? So first and foremost, quite simply, how much money are we talking about, right? How much money are our current pensions funds, the five pensions invested in of the cumulative $160 billion. Um, we'd like to know that information for each of the five specific funds. We'd like to know that number as a percentage of the total. 
We'd like to know how they've been doing, maybe, over the past few years, how they're projected to do. Um, how much exactly is in public equity, fixed income, and private equity, right? That's going to tell us what's our risk, what's our pool of risk here. Secondly, we need to better understand all of the externalities, and it's been a long time since I've been out of college. I don't know if that's the word they still use in economics, but I'm going to assume it is. So the externalities on valuation of our fossil fuel investments now and in a future world, a world that's changing now quite quickly. What's happening with government regulation? That's a pretty obvious externality, right? In New York City, we know that we have our 80 by 50 plan, right, to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emission levels by 80% by the year 2050. We know that the White House and Obama is setting uh, wonderful standards, sorry, I don't mean to put my bias in there, to slash gas emissions from heavy long haul trucks and he's asked companies to pledge to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. We know that in December, there's going to be a global climate treaty negotiated where all governments are going to come to together to talk about the regulations they want to impose in their countries. What's the second externality? I would argue it's that we now live in a culture of conservation and fuel efficiencies, right? What impact does that culture have um, on our investments in fossil fuels? What's the third externality? Well, the alternatives, renewable energies, are increasingly financially competitive with oil, right? And this I know from my daughter, that you can put solar panels on a house in a town outside of Boston and be off the grid. You can have a battery attached to your solar panels that could store the extra energy and when you need it, when it's cloudy, have it there. You can be 100% off the grid. We're not quite there yet because government and the energy companies don't like it. So what we know they do is keep people on the grid. Now we're moving toward leasing the solar panels because the energy companies still want to make some money. Um, I didn't say that, I thought it. But anyway, the point is that we're moving closer to and we know that there's a 100% off the grid option out there. So what's the value of those uh, competitive alternatives now? How will that value change over time? Um, what do we do about the fact that commodities are so volatile, especially recently, right? If you had invested in oil a year ago, you would have been betting that oil stayed at $110 per barrel. Now it's down to $60 per barrel. That's a huge change. A lot of companies, uh, a lot of funds lost their shirts because of that volatility. And we know through several studies, and I'm hoping that uh, our representative from the Rockefeller will talk about this more, there are studies showing that um, the impact of these externalities are such that it's a meaningful financial risk and that there is value to not taking that risk but instead investing in renewable energy sources. I mean, I'm not going to um, say that our hunger for conservation and efficiencies will get us to a place where we need no energy. That's not going to happen. So how do we responsibly weigh right, all these externalities and the fact that renewables are out there? And what's the thinking about timing for all these things? 
you know, four years ago, had you said, let's put up solar panels in New York City, it might have taken five or six years. My example in Boston is better. It might have taken about six years to cover the cost of putting those solar panels up. Now it takes two years to cover those costs because the savings in energy is so big and so fast and the cost of those solar panels has come down dramatically, right? So when we think about what's happening with regulation, with all the different things happening in the marketplace, we have to have a clear sense of the time span, what, what we project is going to happen next year, within two years, within three years, and in the long term. And certainly, when we talk about our pensions, we're talking about uh, the long term, right? So, uh, hang on one second. Let me find myself, because I lost myself. Um, the second thing, yeah, the second thing that I think, so we've talked about all the externalities, we've talked about timing, so next we have to talk about renewables. And as I mentioned just a little bit, we need to understand what the risk profile is of the renewable options that are out there. And these two are changing quite rapidly, but we know that in the long term, the renewables are becoming less risky and in fact worth investing in. Now let's pretend we're talking about a billion dollars and we know it's way more than that, but let's say we were talking about a billion dollars. Would I recommend that today we divest from fossil fuels and invest in renewables? I, I'm not so sure. I don't know. And I would certainly want to take those steps responsibly. Are the renewable companies at a place where we could be investing more and getting more out of them? How, what would those investments look like? What companies would we want to invest in? All of that's really important and we have to study those things. Um, I think we also have to look at other municipalities. What are they doing, right? We mentioned the church. We know that some cities, none as large as New York City, are either have agreed to divest or moving toward divestment. What's happening there? What's happening in those situations? Even though they're a, you know, a fraction of the size of our pensions, what's going on there? We know that universities are contemplating it. There's certainly a lot of activism around it. And uh, at, here at CUNY, NY, uh, what school is it? The uh, new school decided to divest. Not a huge amount of money, 200 million. <laughs> but kudos to them. We need to learn from them. That's a perfect example of some place nearby where we could learn from them. We need to use all of this information. And I'm sure there are a lot more questions. Those were just the ones that I could think of in two days. Um, and that my daughter gave me ideas for. But we need to use all of that information to assess what our risks are and what our opportunities are to develop a roadmap for moving forward. So what has the, uh, what, what's incumbent on local officials to do and what have we done so far? Which is why I'm so glad you're here. Um, because all I got was what was off the website. And I know you're going to talk more about what the city controller is doing. And certainly it, what he's been doing is in, incredibly important and I, I am very interested to hear feedback. Um, there were four things that I saw the New York City controller has been doing. A very active shareholder activism. Um, you know, he's been sending out resolutions to ExxonMobil, for example. Very active in shareholder initiatives. Um, with the, we're, we're going to hear about more tonight with the Series Carbon Asset Risk Initiative. 
Um, he's got a boardroom accountability project um, where resolutions are sent to large companies that would ostensibly result in greater focus on greener technologies, an incredibly powerful message from such a large uh, investment as the New York City pension funds. Um, and the letter to the SEC requesting transparency by the fossil fuel-based companies on their impact on climate change. All of that is important. I'm looking forward to hearing about it. But what should New York City do next? And I'm just going to come right back to where I started. I think we need a roadmap to better understand what to do next. We need to study what we're doing now. We need to study what the opportunities are in renewables. And frankly, we need to repeat that study on a regular basis. Things are moving so quickly. Wouldn't it be great if we could start to be thinking about and hearing the answers to these questions now? Get a study. And then two years from now, check in. There are going to be so many changes because the world's moving really fast. And do the study again. We're going to know so much more. And then two years from then, we should do the study again. This is a fast-moving thing. But what we have to do is get a roadmap. We have to get a study. Thank you so much.